Hello. This is the second of four training videos created by AISE for professional cleaning companies on the Safe Use of Mixture Information Documents, SUMIs, and Supply Chain Communication. This video is going to talk about the AISE SUMIs, what's in them, and how are they chosen by formulators. So first question, what information is provided in the SUMIs? Well, AISC has created 58 SUMIs to cover various applications for workers of detergents, and they cover around 80% of all the identified uses in our sector. Some examples are things like professional spraying and industrial uses used in closed processes. This is a description of situation where, which are highly automated, like processes with strong hygiene requirements, for example, cleaning of food production lines. What's important to understand is that SUMIs are based on application and not the full use of the product. So, for example, if you have something like window cleaning, that will involve various SUMIs because of the different steps in application that are required. You will have a SUMI for the transferring of the product to the container, for the professional use and spraying, and then for brushing after trigger spraying or brushing with tools. Let us go through an example of a SUMI. This is an example of an actual AISC SUMI document. It is the document for professional use spraying. If we look at each section in more detail, we first see a title. The title explains the type of use. Then you have a SWED code. SWED stands for Sector Specific Worker Exposure Description. This is a code that is directly related to the contributing activity carried out by the worker that is associated to the conditions specified in the SUMI. AIC did a mapping of the contributing activities that are most common in our sector through a tool called the Use Maps. An example, like this example, is the SWED PW11. The SWED PW11 is directly associated to professional uses spraying. And then the three will be associated to the risk management measures that are associated to the SUMI. We have the operational conditions that include the maximum duration of use, in this case, 480 minutes per day, indoor use for a process carried out at room temperature using basic standard of general ventilation. And then the risk management measures applicable to the SUMI, which include the use of gloves and the use of goggles. There are then also some information on environmental measures. On the second page of the SUMI, we have some good practice advice, properties of product composition, and a disclaimer. Question 2. What do formulators do to arrive at the correct SUMI? Well, we mentioned the fact that AISC has mapped the various contributing activities related to our sector to SWED codes. And SWED codes have different levels. In this case, we have the SWED IS10, which is related to brushing automated, automated tasks for institutional industrial application. It has two levels one with gloves, wearing gloves, and one not wearing gloves. Based on the information that the formulator will receive on the safe use required for the ingredients present 
in the detergent product, the formulator will use the most conservative assessment and pick the correct sweat. Therefore, the, the correct sweat and therefore the correct sumi. For example, if the formulator, based on the information coming down the supply chain, can assess that all the ingredients in the detergent can be used safely for 480 minutes indoor with no LEV and no gloves, they will pick SWED IS-102 and therefore the SUMI IS-102 that doesn't require gloves and that will be what is shared with the professional cleaning company. If instead there is one ingredient, even one ingredient that requires the use of gloves, then the SWED IS-101 will be pick, picked with the corresponding SUMI. With regards to deciding whether goggles need to be worn, this will be based on the acute information related to the CLP classification of the mixture. In this example, if the product is classified for eye hazard, then the SUMI recommending goggles will be picked. Let's recap. What do formulators do to arrive at the correct SUMI? They use the sweats that are related to the contributing activity carried out by the worker. The sweat codes have different levels, and the levels are associated to different risk management measures. Based on the information received on the risk management measures of the substances in the mixture, the formulator can identify the risk management measures for the full formulation. Then, based on the acute classification of the full mixture, the formulator can assess whether goggles are required or not. Finally, you should note, however, that if the formulation is not classified, the formulator is under no legal obligation to send a SUMI. However, the cleaning company may still receive a company-specific SUMI, so not an AIC SUMI, but a SUMI with a similar format created by the company um, for that specific product. If you want to see some examples of what a company-specific SUMI could look like, or more practically, how a cleaning company could receive the SUMI, and finally, how that SUMI could be used, please go ahead and look at some of the next videos.